Uh, welcome to Wigan Fan TV, a uh, slightly delayed version in many different ways. One, I'm aware that my webcam is going to be delayed and me asking questions to Matt is going to be like I'm in Australia uh, asking questions to Matt, so bear with me on that. It's the internet in the northeast. Uh, two, slightly delayed in the fact that I think the last show that we did was about two months ago, so thank you for persevering with us. Uh, everything should be back to normal now. Um, Matt's returned on his from his... Um, hunting mission to find the new head coach for, for Wigan as David alluded to in the Warrington preview so you can maybe give us an update on that later on um, but lots I think the last time we spoke Matt Sean Edwards was going to be the Wigan coach next year so much has changed since the last time uh, we actually you know, sat down and, and had a discussion um, so like, let's let's just sort of get into it in as much as where Wigan are right now are you happy with where we, where we are are you happy with where we're going I think happy is an interesting word, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I'm not desolate. I, I do feel there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it might just be an oncoming train, but <laughs> it's, th th things have been miserable, obviously. They've not been... I feel like I've lost you now, Matt. Well, what what a return to uh, to form! I'm going to take Matt off the screen and bring him back on. Um, David's going to be joining us as well at some point tonight, and uh, hopefully uh, Matt, Matt Matthew will be joining us at some point um, as he uh, does his 900th uh, run. So I'm just going to sort of uh, pretend to do it solo. Matt is still frozen on the screen. Uh, <laughs> right, Matt, I'm going to take you take you off and see if he uh, see if he can log back in. Um, so yeah, the last time we were on, like I said, Sean Edwards was going to be uh, the next Wigan coach. Um, what else did we have? We've had the signings, uh, haven't we? Since and the contract renewals. Um, <laughs> yes, I finally uh, silenced Matt. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, although I'd rather not silence him because I'd like quite like him uh, to come back on screen, so I'm not on my own. Um, I'm just going to quickly send him a message as I'm talking to you all. If anybody's got any questions for us uh, tonight as well, please send them through. We've got quite uh, a little bit um, of sort of exciting news um, to come in, in just a second. Matt's logged out, he's going to log back on. Um, I may as well tell you that exciting news now, actually. So um, one thing uh, that Mark has spoken about quite a bit on the show, I know when Mark uh, kindly hosted the show for me a couple of months ago, he was talking about the fan engagement board and the work that... Um, they've been doing and I, I've been involved I haven't been heavily involved over the past um, few months but um, one of the big things that came from the fan engagement board is the uh, the fan village um, which uh, you know was there for, for quite a considerable amount of time at various points during the season last year wasn't it uh, and then it sort of disappeared this year whilst the work was being done at Robin Park and um, that is now going to happen um, and the Salford game will be the very first um, in its new home, which will be Robin Park. Um, so basically, obviously, they're doing lots of work at Robin Park uh, at this moment in time, um, as we all know. I think everything should be ready by September. A lot of the admin staff are over there, and they're still doing a lot of work. But on um, the, the next game at home, the Salford game, they're opening that. Um, they're opening the fan village for the very first time um, within Robin Park. So why is that relevant to what I'm saying? mainly because I'm trying to fill, but two, um, the Fan Engagement Board will have a lot of involvement in that, so um, hopefully all being well, as long as I can get down to the game, I'll be hosting uh, the Fan Village, um, so we'll have um, players on stage that are not playing, like you normally get in the lounges in the DW Stadium, um, so it'll be me that um, is attempting to, to interview them, but not from, you know, basically I want questions um, from everybody else. Matt's just about to come back on, um, and we'll see... If we can, hello, Matt. Thank you for joining. What did you do to me? That was painful. You were, you were. Uh, tell me about it. It was painful for everybody watching. And I've just been <laughs> talking rubbish. But one thing that I want to want to finish on is I've just been saying that the fan engagement board. One thing that that's sort of now finalised is the fan village. Um, so I had a call with Wigan earlier in the day. I didn't know this was happening. Um, but the fan village uh, for the Salford game is now pretty much going to be established. It's going to be in Robin Park. They're doing it bespoke yeah. to make sure that it's a bit of a, an environment for fans. It's not just going to be on the car park of Robin Park as it has been. Um, they're going to have like the the bar there and all sorts of things. But one thing that they're doing is the fan engagement board are, are hosting it. So the first one 
so long as I can get down there. Um, I'll be hosting it on stage. I'll be interviewing players and things like that, which is quite frightening. Um, not as frightening as if you were doing it with me. Um, <laughs> but um, so yeah, we want obviously close to the time we'll be asking them for uh, asking people for questions um, to to ask for various players who might, might not be playing. Chris Rodinski hopefully might be joining us for the first one. So the fan village will be. A permanent, semi-permanent fixture moving yeah. forward, uh, based at Robin Park, which is quite good. And the nice thing about that is that the money that you spend in Robin Park actually goes into the rugby club rather than the football club. So if you normally spend ten quid inside the ground, if you spend it in Robin Park, that actually goes into the Wigan Rugby Club rather than the football club. Um, so that's one positive. But Matt, you know, let's let's talk about that. I mean, Robin Park, it seems to have been a slow development. It seems to be going, but your thoughts on that now that I've just sort of breaking news for you that the fan village is returning it's it's good news what I want to know is this will they have decent beer in the fan village can, can I tell you the answer to that no it's Kingfisher um, oh. as, as it was last time uh, but don't let that put you off uh, David I think uh, David says how early does the fan village start before the game it should be starting at six o'clock I think that's six till half seven is, is the aim and um, and it won't be as bad as the last three minutes of me trying to fill the gap on here while Matt uh, reconnected his internet. Um, so yeah, well, basically, I don't want to write any questions. I just want to put questions to uh, to the players and, and whoever coaching and stuff um, from from fans because that, that's what it has to be really to to sort of uh, to make it work well. Um, right, Matt, back onto where we are. You said happy. You, you basically said. Now, happy is a funny word, isn't it? And then we lost you. Go on. Why are you happy? Are you right. not happy? Are you sad? I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm an optimist. I'm never ever totally despondent about anything, and it is not 2006. There's no sign of Dot Murray, so we don't need to panic too much. Um, what I think is 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 a good thing is that what else can go wrong? Really, I mean. This this is a club that continuously continuously surprises you. You know, we, we feel like we've we've got over I mean the last time I mean it's Zach Hardacre been banned the last time we were on this show. Um what have we had? We've had Craig we went through the list, didn't we, last time and we thought, yeah. right, this is it. This is this is where we draw the line. We start a fresh year, the club are gonna sort it out, there's not gonna be a problem. And then Talima Tausai goes and does what he did. Um, uh, you know, of all the people that you probably would have expected it to, to have been, Talima Tautai is probably would have yeah. been w- way down on the list for, for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, is, is this season a write off or have we now got hope after the last, you know, we put a, what, a string of, of a few victories together? We had a tough victory, obviously, at Headingley last time out. Are you optimistic for that top five? Can we do it again? I I don't really care if we do or we don't, to be honest. So long as we avoid the, the, the relegation cat fight at the bottom with all the spitting and the claws and the teeth, um, and so long as we see some decent rugby, then I don't really care if we hit the top five or not. I remember a very wise man, more or less the start of the season, starting a debate and that debate was over, over the following statement. It was mm. that Wigan Warriors fans should lower their expectations for 2019. Now, I can't remember what genius came up with that, but I think he was right. I think this season has just been about redressing, just kind of getting our heads around the fact that we've lost Sean Wayne and, and a few significant players. There's going to be significant changes. Lamb is a very different style of coach. Um, who who knows whether he's going to... I hope he's going to be our coach next season. We've got players leaving. We've got more players coming in. I think they call this a transition season. And that's an overused phrase when everyone's on. Mm-hmm. Whenever a club's doing really shit, they call it transition. But I yeah. genuinely think this is a transition season. Okay, so that, that same person that started that fantastic debate about Wigan fans should lower their expectations also uh, had a question of a win at Wembley is worth twice, uh, is, is worth two wins at Old Trafford. Now, this season, that, that can't exactly happen, can it? No, no, we, we can't win at Wembley. 
Um, I mean, if we but, if we were a late entrance to the eighteen the the Derek Beaumont deck chairs or whatever it's called eighteen ninety five cup of which is drawing attendances of about three hundred people, then we might have a chance. But it's not going to happen, Matt. No, it's not. It's not. But you know what? We get to save money as fans by not <laughs> having to travel really? all the way down to yeah, Wembley. Fa- fantastic. I mean, the last time we went to London, that ended well, didn't it? When we went down to the arena, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, what more do you want? You had a tri- you've had your trip to London this year with, with London getting promoted. So what more do you want? You know, you had a trip to the new camp. So yeah, maybe yeah. maybe you're right. Maybe. Where else we'll can we lose? Okay. <laughs> So transition, we, we, we talked about, I just want to answer jo- Josie's point here about when are the club going to announce the fans village. Uh, I don't know, Josie, I think they're just trying to sort of finalise everything. Um, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said what I've said, but I don't think they would have told me otherwise. But, you know, it's, it's there. I think they're just trying to finalise the, the final details just because Robin Park is still a bit of a, a building site in, in various aspects of it. Um, but they're really keen to get it going. And obviously with the fact that we've got a lot of home games uh, coming up over the over the summer period, really, which is you know one of the main reasons for it. But I think one of the big things for me with the fan village that I just discussed is the fact that whatever you spend in there goes into the club. So rather than spending it in the stadium, I know the club are never going to sort of put that on official communication. Um, but I think as fans, we're, we're sort of uh, bright enough to work that out that the uh, the money that we spend in there will actually be reinvested. Well, don't get started on reinvestment, Sean. Um, right. Okay. So transition period, uh, Matt. So one thing that's happened whilst we've been um, on hiatus, whilst we've been um, searching for our next, next head coach, which we'll come on to in a second, is we've, we're have we partly part of the way through our progress in terms of how the team in 2020 is going to look. We know George Williams um, is going to go. We, I think we even knew that the last show. New deals yeah. for Partington, Smithies, uh, Hankinson, Club, Burgess. There was sort of that build-up and it never really sort of hit the peak that we were perhaps expecting with a with a marquee signing or a halfback. But firstly, I, I think one of the biggest signings that we're going to have made is, is Morgan Smithies. How impressed have you been with, with him over the past few months since he's broken into the team? He's been great, hasn't he? He's just the sort of young forward you'd hope would come along and replace John Bateman. The, you know, there's no two ways about it. He's great. And he's got good hair, better hair than John Bateman. Uh, so, you know... It's going it's to attract lots of people to come and watch just for that haircut. <laughs> Brilliant. And not actually, John Bateman, if you remember John Bateman's haircut when he first came um, with the little braids, like the little Jedi braids, like Obi-Wan Kenobi in A Phantom Menace. I mean, I don't think oh, anybody... I, his hair. I, I thought it was a medical condition he had. You might, that... Well, I, I think it, that... Do, that is a medical condition of being born in Bradford. And when he moved over, yeah. they managed to remove it. But, I mean, he did pretty well with it. You know, I mean, it was yeah. fashionable in 1999 uh, when the Phantom <laughs> Menace came out. Uh, Andy Lawson says, will Max Clubs be in the stadium or the fan village? I, I mean, yeah. Honestly, Andy, I, I really don't know. Um, I would assume where it is. Uh, I, that's literally everything that I know, to be honest with you, what I've said. But the club should be announcing things you know, when the, on, on the Thursday before the Friday game, probably. But, you know, never mind. Um, yeah, so Morgan Smithy's uh, new contract sign. He is the next mm-hmm. John Bateman, really, isn't he? I mean, th- this is a guy Definitely. that I think has taken on... In his first game, he took on Greg Bird. He's taken on Ben murdoch Masilla. He took on... Um, um, Trent Merrin last weekend. I mean, this guy, yeah. for for his age, he just doesn't take a backward step. And I, for the fact that he's from Yorkshire and we're going to manage to tie him down, that I, I think I, I spoke to you about, I was a little bit nervous about how he'd sort of broken into the team and, you know, other clubs could come uh, clubs come sort of uh, sniffing around him. But we managed to tie him down. Oliver Partington, another one. Happy to see him tied down. First try at the yeah. weekend as well for him. If you think, most of these players that have been tied down... They, they've proved to themselves to be scorers, haven't they? I mean, we got Tony Club, free score, scoring prop. <laughs> um, uh, Partington scored. Um, you know, it, I think there's there's a subtle message in there. If you sign them, they will score. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Chris, Ank- uh, Chris Ankinson, another one who probably had his best game mm-hmm. in a Wigan shirt as, as soon as he was rewarded with, with that contract. And, and all of a yeah. sudden, we've discovered that this guy who was kicking for Swinton for fun for a couple of years previously can, can actually do that whilst he's wearing a different coloured shirt as well at Wigan. It's, it's amazing that it's taken us a year to find that out. Lots of love for Smithies um, on, on, the, um, on the comments as well. I mean, he is a fantastic player, I mean, fantastic it's future. Hair. It must be his hair. Um, people saying he's a ready-made replacement for um, 
for, for Sean O'Loughlin. We'll come on to Sean O'Loughlin in a moment because he's a person I think that, you know, he's a legend, but I think his forms polarise opinions. One of the interesting things from, from that big announcement uh, was Joe Burgess signing a one-year contract. Now, he, he's been very open, very honest, that he want, would like a crack in the NRL again at, at some point. Are the club right to sort of just give him another year and, you know, let's enjoy him for the time that we've got him? Or, or does should Joe Burgess perhaps be showing a bit more loyalty to a club that have stood by him with over two, well, one bad injury last year? They've took him back from the NRL. Uh, or, or are we just simply not big enough to compete with, with you know, the demands that the NRL could uh, could bring to him? I, I don't know. Did I dream this? Or did the club say something along the lines of he's accepted a one-year deal and in that year, he can prove himself to us that he's worthy of another deal. I'm sure I read a press release that said something like that. I mean, that's strange if that happened. I mean, I know I know we're blessed in the wingers department, but, you know, Tom Davis and, and uh, Don Manfredi with, with long-term absences, um, you know, we've got people like Joe Brown that are sort of in and around the first team. But, I mean, this is a guy who's been, been capped by England He's not been there to... I mean, James here says that Bird just needs to improve his defence. Maybe that's the case. Maybe, you know, it's one of those things where I think some fans see who can watch the game probably a lot better than, than I. You know, I, I just see big men run at each other and hold back the score. But if you can see perhaps the tactical uh, side of the game, maybe that, that's something that, that the club have recognised. But, I mean, just before he picked up that injury earlier on in the season, he was our only outlet of, of scoring tries, particularly that second mm-hmm. Salford game that scored the hat-trick. Um, you know, that, that's one of the things Josie says. I heard that too about Budgie. Um, it was Burgess who said it that. It wasn't that just me dreaming it then. Well, apparently it was Joe Burgess that said that. He needs to prove himself, which is a cop out. Oh. He doesn't really mean that, does he? <laughs> I need to prove myself that I'm worthy of going back to uh, going back to Sydney. Uh, to um, yeah, the dog wants to go out. It's not my dog, honestly. It really isn't my dog. Like there's a dog barking and I've got my window open, which is a bit of a problem. So yeah, I apologize. I just feel like it adds to the, you know, the the authenticity of the fact being back, uh, being back. You know, things don't go right on this show. Um, now that is my dog barking, <laughs> and that's the neighbour's dog barking. Um, so there you go. Um, Stereo dogs. Yeah, we'll we'll bring that back. So James says, uh, yeah, he can score hat tricks at Salford, but he was at fault for two. So there you go. Maybe that's that's something that they're looking at. You know, the defence. You know, he's perhaps not the finished product that, that we think and hope that it would be. Um, one player that you touched on uh, as we go through this. I never touched review. any player. You did, uh, and, oh. and his shirt is is behind you. Um, Tony Club, um, that try. Let's talk about that. The the try that wasn't a try. Um, he just got giddy. I mean, the fact that he ran round Brett Ferris is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. The fact that he did it at Leeds, yeah, he did it at Headingley. The fact that it was Tony Club, who's a prop, that did it. And the fact that he didn't actually score it, it doesn't really make up for the try that should have been a try at Wembley. But it was, as, as last minute tries go in that circumstance, it was a bit, it was a, a great way to, to do it. And, and particularly that sort of cheeky look on his face. But Tony Club, 32, two year contract, takes him obviously to, to 34. Happy with that? Is that good business from Wigan? Yes, yeah, because throughout all this transitioning, we will need elder statesmen like Club. And he, I, I genuinely, I mean, I don't know, but I genuinely don't think that he wants to leave Wigan. I don't know the details of how much he's being paid for over the next two years, but I think he'll provide some stability. OK, as Stephen says, um, the other person, again, there's lots of rumours about this, Dan Sargentson to Salford, uh, sweetener for, mm-hmm. for Jackson Hastings. Now, there's lots of talk about the, the halfback uh, situation, isn't there, at Wigan at this moment? There was even a rumour today about um, the fact that Leeds have offered or are offering money to Salford to release Jackson Hastings early. And Salford have turned around and said, we want £400,000 for him. Yeah. Somebody that has less than six months left on the contract. That's fantastic for, for, by Salford, uh, if that ha- actually happens. But um, you, Dan Sargeson, world's best fullback, according to Adrian Lamb. It looks like he will be leaving at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. You know, bit, how do you see that departure? It'll be a second departure from Wigan. He seems to be a player that could never do any right in many fans' eyes, you think? felt a bit sorry for him, to be honest, because I've always really rated him. Um, and I, w- I was quite happy when he came back. Uh, but this business about him being a, a sweetener for Jackson Hastings, if Hastings is off contract at the end of this season, it won't make any difference, will it, whether they 
sign Sargent and are not because if they don't hold his contract, sure. then that's that that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I, I, Sorry, Stephen, <laughs> that was Mark that said that. <laughs> I I think I, I think we'll miss Sargentson. Um but hey, we've got Bibby. So yeah, Jay Bibby comes in, a, a player that for me I think is completely bypassed me in games that I've watched. He's just one of those players who who appears on the team sheet, but I never really look out for him because he's not a superstar. But then you look at his form this year, it's been pretty fantastic really for Salford. So he looks to be our centre signing, centre replacement, uh, like for like for Dan Sargent. Have you seen much of Jake Bibby? Are you happy that he's coming in? Is it obviously a Wigan lad coming back home? I, I couldn't even pick him out in a crowd of three, to be honest. I, I, I couldn't pick him out um, in a crowd of one. No. <laughs> Gen, like, genuinely, but, and that's, that's terrible to say, I know, but that's true. Mm-hmm. But that, that, that means nothing because, you know, when I watch Wigan play Salford, it is generally through closed eyes, just squinting a little bit because Salford are a team that have worried me this season. Um, Getting off the car park is a particular worry at Salford. (laughs) Um, But, I I mean, I I, I don't think we are stupid with recruitment. And the bottom line is this. How good is shouting Bibby? Have you tried it? Bibby. Yeah, no, no, give it a proper... Like, he's just scored a try for Wigan. Um, Bibby! Now, that... The baby's in bed. Can you imagine if I wake Liddy up by shouting Bibby? (laughs) That's not going to go down well, is it? The dog's barking, and I'm shouting Bibby. That's not going (laughs) to go down well. Uh, Tony says... uh, This is interesting. I like like Tony's insight, because he he normally knows things that that he shouldn't know. Uh, Watkins almost came to us on the second marquee. Hope we can use it on someone else. That's interesting. Obviously, willing to spend Mm -hmm. money on players like Callum Watkins, uh, you know, particularly um, when they're available. So that, that's interesting. Uh, next one, Stu, brilliant, perfect timing. Mitch Clark from Castleford, happy with him. Again, I've got to be honest with Mitch Clark. Obviously, I'm not watching enough rugby. The first time I noticed uh, Mitch Clark really was when he the, the comeback win by Castleford against us, and I thought it was mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic. And I basically wondered who the hell he was. Have you seen much of Mitch Clark? Are you happy to, to see him come to Wigan next year? Uh, I, like you, it came to my attention um, when they came back and, and beat us. Uh, and I did a bit of research on him, and um, it seems at the time Castleford fans were in love with him. Um, you do that same research now, they all think he's awful and can't wait to see the back of him. Um, yeah. Secretly, I think Castleford fan. They know that the reason they lost last week was because he wasn't playing. Um, and I think secretly Daryl Powell knows that too. I think that's a good signing we've got there. I think it's, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if one performance is, is a judgment, then yeah, that was a fantastic performance against us. Um, so lots of random things to cover, like I said. But uh, So David says we will sign another prop as well as Clark. Uh, Salima Tauta is probably going. Hamlin's obviously left earlier on in the year. Now, for me, I think we've got to sign another prop, certainly. I'm more interested in, I think we've got to sign somebody for the rest of the season. Now, I think we've got a history of, of mid-season signings. Uh, obviously, Joe Greenwood last year had a fantastic uh, mm-hmm. impact, and that was after the Joel, Joel Tompkins went to OKR. So, we've got history. We don't know what's happening, obviously, with Talima Tauside, but he's not available for selection. Gabe Hamlin's obviously not available for selection. So, you've got two players there who... You know, like them or, or don't like them. Um, we're certainly in and out of out of the first team when available. Um, and I just wonder whether Mitch Clark. I know we're going to have tried to bring him in earlier. Whether Castleford, you know, perhaps in exchange for Talima Tausai, uh, as long as he can stay in the country, whether that may be something. But I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if Wigan did look at bringing somebody else in um, be, before. The, we've we've got a, a, a transfer deadline now, Matt. Did you know that? Um, it, in, it's in, moved, they, hasn't it? <laughs> they've moved it, and we've got like two or three. Uh, we've got one for the eighteen ninety five cup. We've got one for the championship. We've got one for mm-hmm. the super league. It's a mess, but we but we've got time, obviously, to to sign players. So mm-hmm. yeah, James says a, another experienced property is a priority. We almost me need, and uh, I don't mean to sort of just say this because it, it may be a, a close relation to you, Matt. We all, almost need another Andy Coley, don't we? We we could yeah. <laughs> The, the old Andy Coley is knackered, trust me. He's, <laughs> he's, he's more interested in running marathons now. 
his, his knees would never take it. But yeah, we, we could do with someone of that ilk. Definitely. Uh, Michael here, in danger of upsetting you, says Navarrete can go for me. We need better. Navarrete, right. I've, I've not, you know, he's been in, a, he's been in and out of the team, hasn't he? Recently, I mean, I think he's been steady, but honestly, that that knock on, that knock on in the new camp, that was oh, not in the new camp at Warrington. Jesus, that, that yeah, he could go for that. Uh, Stuart says, don't forget mm-hmm. uh, Frank Paul, the Cotton Ball as well. He was a mid-season signing, did all right in that in in that first season. You've got to remember that he was in the mm-hmm. grand final starting team. I thought he did okay. Uh, right. But you, you, you know yeah. what? I mean, call, call me Miss Marple or, or, or whatever you like, really. But it seems strange to me that, you know, all, all these things have happened. And, and when you shift them around, things fall into place, right? So Wigan want to bring Mitch Clark in a bit early. So they're arranging that with Castleford, who then don't play him. Wigan then say to Talima Tautai, by the way, you're going to Castleford. He disappears to the pub. Um, and suddenly... As most, everything most falls people into would place. do. Yeah, and well, yeah. you might be right. You know, as most people would, you know, I mean, I think the pub is probably the, the lightest option if you were told that you are going to Castleford. Yeah. Um, if someone Martin told me in, I was going to Castleford, I'd get hammered. <laughs> yeah, damn right. Uh, Martin puts on here, I think Liam Paisley is going to Barrow. Yeah, that was rumoured today. I saw that as well. Um, it looks like um, Liam Paisley, who's been on uh, dual reg with Swinton, scored a hat trick against Toulouse last week as well. Um, he's been, you know, he's played for the first team this year, hasn't he? He's, and I, I like Liam Paisley. I think he's a good, good, strong second rower. Um, but it seems strange that we're going to allow him to go permanently to Barrow. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Martin can can tell me whether I'm right or wrong on that. Um, We've got James says we've got two young props. Liam, yeah, Liam Byrne. I forgot about Liam Byrne. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was there, and uh, you know, maybe I can't. Has he picked up an injury? Why is he not sort of uh, in the nineteen? But and and how hard as well. Um, need to be managed with, with game time next year. So yeah, interesting. Obviously, you know, that, that's always the thing, isn't it, with Wigan that we've got uh, fantastic players um, coming through. Uh, John says bring Mitch in as soon as possible. Yeah, I hope they do. I think we, any team can benefit from mm-hmm. from a boost like that. Uh, bring bringing it in. And Josh says bloody hope not. I don't know what you bloody hope not. It could be anything. Um, but yeah, Liam Paisley, I think is probably <laughs> probably uh, what what she's saying on that. Um, but yeah, that's so. In, in terms of transfers. Let's try and draw a line under that head coach, Matt. Now, you have been, according to David, uh, on the search for the head coach. What what have you decided um, or who have you decided should be or will be the head coach in 2020? Well, I've I've been conducting um, really extensive interviews and I can tell you this. There is nobody in the Cotswolds who fits a bill. Um, okay. I've looked in all the pubs around this village and a few other villages that there's nobody. My my thoughts are stick with Lamb. What, why okay. do people want to get rid of Lamb? He's he's not had a full season yet, and okay. you need at least two seasons, I reckon, to bed in as a coach. I I completely agree with you. I I think Adrian Lamb will be the coach in 2020, and I would like him to be the coach in 2020. I think the the phrase that you used before, the horrible phrase of transition period, does apply, and I think the same reason why Lee should have uh, stuck with David Ferner as well. Yeah. Um, however, have we seen what Adrian Lamb said he was going to bring in? So just play devil's advocate with you. He was talking about an expansive open rugby. We've seen that I think in one game, and that was a Catalans game at home. Now, any team can play well in one game. Um, do you believe? Do you believe that Adrian Lamb is the person that can actually sort of do what he what he was hoping to do? What he what what he promised really when he signed? You know, can he bring that attacking flair? Because really, he's improved the defence over the past few weeks, which has been great. But we need to start looking at the attack again. I I think you're being a bit unfair because I think we saw flashes of it early in the season. Um, but we also saw a, f- a fairly lacklustre and loose defence back then too. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, we had, and I know we've not had a situation where like all our players have been injured at once, but we've had this kind of constant, almost rolling programme of having to replace pr- players week after week after week. So we've not seen a consistency within the team itself. Yeah. Um, so as far as I'm concerned... Yes, we saw bits of it, 
Um, then I think there, there was a period of panic and inconsistency. Um, since then, we've been building on the defence, quite rightly, because I think, you know, it, it has been a bit of a shambles at time. And I reckon, hopefully, fingers crossed, in the next few weeks, we're going to see more of that. It's actually really dividing opinion on the comments here. I'm going to try. Now, there's a new feature on this, so bear with me, because this could like basically just crash or do something. There's a create okay. poll uh, thing, so I'm going to, going to try and do it. Uh, so, Lam, stay in, in, uh, in 2020, yes or no. It it's really is dividing opinion on here. People just saying, no, absolutely not. Uh, the attack will be even worse. Peter Meadow says the attack will be even worse without Williams next year. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't believe how much it's dividing opinion. So, to those people who are asking the questions, uh, sort of, sorry, suggesting that um, Adrian Lamb shouldn't be uh, here next year, who, tell me who you would like to see so we can get some suggestions in. Uh, and let's, let's sort of just say straight away um, that um, Adrian, um, Sean Wayne is not an option. So, I'm going to put this poll live. So, Lamb stay in 2020, yes or no? Have a vote on that, uh, if you will, for me. Let's see if it works. I don't know. Um, Ruby will come with a settled team, Michael Worms says. Yeah, so this is something that I've I've mentioned earlier on in the season. I think you were sort of just alluding to it a little bit there is. I don't think Adrian Lamp up until the past, well, not even in the past few weeks, he hasn't had that opportunity, has he, to play a settled team. I don't think he knew what his best team was at the start of the year. I still don't think he knows what his best team is now. Um, but he needs. he's getting to that stage where he really needs to do it. But the injuries, I think, have, have hampered with that. Um my biggest concern, though, with Adrian Lamb, and get your thoughts on this, Matt, is I, I still don't know how he, how he sees his halfbacks playing in his hookers. Because one week, you know, we had Sean O'Loughlin there. We've, had, we've gone back to Lulawai and Williams. We had Samet on the bench, but not get used. Shorrox has been forgotten. Powell, I think, has been playing fantastically well recently, uh, Sam Powell. But mm -hmm. is that a concern for you, that, that the halfback's such a crucial position that we don't have a, a settled spine to the team really if you like i think he knows exactly what halfbacks he wants to see out there together and i think it's Samet and williams mm -hmm. um to the point where i think Samet was on the bench as a measure of desperation because i don't think he's fully fit at the moment okay and i think Samet was putting you know, out you know if things start going really badly wrong have Samet as backup he might not be as bad at his best but maybe putting him on might just do something. Um, that's how I see it. I might be totally wrong. I probably am totally wrong. But I think Samet and Williams is is the halfback combination we'll see more of when, when they're both fit. I just want to... I'm not completely ignoring you here, but I, I can't see if this is sort of a... Mine, you've got you've got to be joking on, on this comment, surely. Lamb's brought the young lads in, such as... Um, Smithies, Burn, Partington, something that Wayne never did. Now that, that has got to be a joke. I'm, I'm not. You're not pulling my leg on that because Sean Wayne. I think what was it? 46 <laughs> debuts he gave to Wigan Academy players. I think you're winding me up there, Martin. Um, but if you're not, I, don't, I, I think Sean Wayne brought a lot of young lads, lads through, and a lot of young lads that are still playing in the Super League. But yes, I think you, you're right. Adrian Lamb has continued with that as well, hasn't he? He's not been afraid to... I mean, go back to Morgan Smithies. He's not been afraid to keep Morgan Smithies in there. I no. think he needs to be a little bit braver with that as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Matt, oh, you going there? No, Morgan Smithies, case in point. I hadn't even heard of him until this season. Yeah, Josh says, Wayne gave 41 youngsters. Uh, if Lamb doesn't stay, I wouldn't mind Ian Watson, who's doing wonders. We've got uh, Chris Chester on here. I mean, it's the usual. No, I don't think anybody's come uh, with anything sort of uh, left field at me at this moment in time in terms of uh, people that they would like to get. Uh, Tony says, Lamb or Flanagan not getting an NRL gig for a couple of years. Uh, Paul Deacon. Um, so, yeah, we're going back to really to, I guess, the discussions that we that we had. Um, you know, Martin Gleeson. Martin Gleeson gone to Rugby Union now, hasn't he? We, we've shown long. That's a that's a you know when Wasps play Harlequins next year, that that <laughs> bar under the stand at Harlequins, um, they need to restock on on the alcohol yeah. next year, don't they? When uh, when Gleeson and Long uh, meet up in the capital, that that's dangerous. I reckon that Fred's going to make a fortune out of that too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, why has George Williams uh, to Canberra Red has not been announced yet? I, I think simply. Uh, because we've not signed Jackson Hastings or James Maloney or whoever else we're, we're getting as a replacement. Wigan, I don't think, will announce 
um, will announce George Williams leaving until they can announce a, repla a replacement, similar to what they did with uh, John Berman last year, which, you know, whether you agree with it or not, that's the way that the club do it. And, you know, it's damage limitation, I think, as far as, uh, as, far as, the, um, as far as the club are concerned. On that poll, what have we got? We've got uh, Adrian Lamb staying in 2020 looks to be the winner uh, on there. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I genuinely think that he will be there. Obviously, Spencer reckons it should be Richie Mathers uh, who, who should be in there. Um, but, yeah, so, right, let's actually have a look at the preview, which is the title of the show. Uh, the Huddersfield preview. Now, can I take you back to an awful night in March, Matt? <laughs> Wigan versus Huddersfield at the DW Stadium. One of the worst Wigan performances for a long, long time. I think, in fact, I think that was the game. Was it like two weeks after the World Club Challenge that Adrian Lamb said his team was still struggling with a hangover from the World Club Challenge? And I think he then realised that excuses don't really wash on Wigan fans. Huddersfield yeah. being very much hot and cold, but such a compact. Uh, area of the table that that we're in now. Th this becomes yet again another must-win game. How do you see uh, Friday night's game going, Matt? I don't know. I honestly <laughs> haven't a clue because I mean, look at Huddersfield thrashing Hull one week, getting thrashed by Saints, you know, last week. Um, I, I, I would like to think actually, um, if you look seriously at Wigan's game against Leeds last weekend. I thought Leeds didn't play all that badly, and I thought Wigan were very, very strong. Um, and if you take that on its own and that mentality into the Huddersfield game, I think Wigan should win. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game, but I think Wigan so should you, you touched on it then, is the erratic nature, I think, of, of the Super League over the, well, this season, really. You know, you've got Hull, who had a horrendous start to the season, beat Wigan in that golden point game and then go on a run, and then they get mm -hmm. battered one week. They battered, you know, they had 50 put on them uh, at Magic Weekend, didn't they, against Huddersfield? Uh, I'm a, uh, yeah. It, like, you know, it's these, exciting, these things, isn't it? Is it exciting? You say erratic, I say erotic. I think that, that it's a real turn on Super League when it's like this. Okay, I think Ralph Rimmer will be will be pleased with that. That might be the slogan next year. Instead of every minute matters, uh, erotic, not not erratic, um, which is easy to say. Um, so yeah, the, the fact that we've got such a, a tight condensed uh, table, you know, we're, we're not a million miles away from relegation. No. At the same time, we're not a million miles away from never mind the playoffs. We're not a million miles away from third place um, if we go on a decent run. Um, do you think it's all about consistency now and, and getting that settled yeah. team? Do you think the fact that we don't have that, I mean, it's awful to say, but the fact that we don't have a semi-final, so we have a week off in a few weeks' time again, do you think that'll help us? I think that'll be huge. I think in terms of keeping players fit and fresh, um, getting those niggling injuries out of the way, uh, and any weeks off that we can get, we need to take advantage of. So here's, here's a question. Yeah, that's a reason to get knocked out of the cup. Um <laughs> so, Farrell, optimism. Farrell and Greenwood uh, back back in the side. Obviously, Greenwood fantastic on that left side. Liam Farrell fantastic on that left hand side. Now, there's been talk about Liam Farrell maybe going to thirteen. Now, against Leeds, he didn't have. He had a great game in in the sense that he got that assist with Harrison. He made a few mistakes. Do you, would you put Farrell on the right hand side, or would you like to see him in that number thirteen role and, and sort of have an opportunity? I've just got a theory that he can only break through defences on the left hand side. He just he just can't do it anywhere else. Yeah, I, I've put a lot of thought into this, um, and what I've decided is we just need a bigger left hand side um, with more space on for more players. So kind of just extend the left. Um, yeah. Keep the right as it is, just more on the left, basically. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, OK, so you don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Um, I assume that you think Wigan will win by what score would you like? Would you, what score would you like Wigan to win by? <laughs> <laughs> what score would I like Wigan to win by? 80. Yes. <laughs> OK, uh, and what score do you think they'll win by? I think they'll win it by 10 points. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I, I will go 
I think we're going to win by 18 points. I think hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to the stage where we we start putting a little bit of a performance together and maybe score some uh, some some decent tries and, and get there. Um, Faz uh, to 13 lockers to prop on here. Uh, we've got lots of different sort of suggestions coming coming through. I mean, yeah, Sean O'Loughlin to to prop. Uh, you know, we've had him at standoff. We've had him at prop. We've had him at loose forward. Um, yeah. Josie says Lockers is supposed to be going to prop for the last three years. Yeah, he has, and then he we put him back at thirteen, yeah. and then he has a great game, you know, and then we sort of keep him there, and you don't change that, do you? So, um, Matt, now I haven't asked you this, but I'm trying to wonder what is on the whiteboard behind you, and um, whether I don't know, are you going to are you going to take us on a guided tour of Huddersfield? Yeah, yeah, um, okay. I'm bearing in mind I've not had long to put this together. Um, but I have I have pulled out a few thoughts about Huddersfield and, the, and those fans who are travelling to Huddersfield. Um, so first, appear, if you're driving to Huddersfield on Friday, you'll be looking for somewhere to park. Uh, my advice is Halifax, because wherever it is you park, you're going to be at least 30 miles away from the stadium. <laughs> and, and that stadium, you'll you'll know it when you see it. It looks like it was built in pre-Glasnost Russia. Uh, it's, it's, it makes the DW look exotic, doesn't it? Um, it's you know, those trees behind just, that stand that just add to this. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big... It's, it's those kind of the, the big concrete pillars on concrete spider legs that look a little bit scary. I don't, I don't like them. Um, and I, I've got to be honest... I, I I really was struggling to to find anything at all to say about Huddersfield, so I I did a bit of research. I googled it. I googled interesting facts about Huddersfield. That was a quick read. Um, yeah. Apparently, they built the world's biggest nodding dog there, um, and a three wheeled car that they called the LSD. Um, make <laughs> of that what you will. Um, and I, some people say it's the, the biggest town in Britain. It, it's not. Um, it's not so much a town, really, as a, as a crater formed when a bit of the moon fell off and landed in West Yorkshire. And I think that partly explains why, why there's no atmosphere in the stadium itself. Um, that and the fact that Huddersfield are one of the few teams who have mastered the art of, no matter how well they play or how successful they are, very few spectators turn up to see them. Just a couple of blokes and a, and a dog, and that a big nodding, nodding dog, obviously, and that with, bloody with cowbell, clanging cowbell of doom. <laughs> um, so the question is, which Huddersfield Giants team will turn up? Will it be the one with nobody in it from Huddersfield, who are bobbins, or will it be the one with nobody in it from Huddersfield, who are pretty good? Um, it, whoever it is, if you're going, do uh, enjoy your, your time there and enjoy your walk back to your car through a, a post-apocalyptic world of industrial estates um, because that is the best Huddersfield will have to offer you. That and the fact that we're going to win. And See, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick up a little bit for Huddersfield here, Mark. Don't I, do I, that, Sean. No, Don't do I, it. I am going to stick up. I mean, you've got... You, if you get in the train to Huddersfield, you go off into what is quite a nice sort of old train station. You've got the choice of two pubs when you get out. You've got the Head of Steam pub in there. And as you walk into the Head of Steam pub, you make a decision straight away. Lagers to the left, Croftdales to the right. You know, and then you judge <laughs> by on which, which so direction you're going. They've got an apartheid system. They've yeah, absolutely. they an apartheid system. Yeah, you've, you've got to make that choice. And you get judged on that choice, and that determines your experience, I think, of Huddersfield. Then when you come out of the head of steam, you're greeted by the statue of Harold Wilson, the, the Prime Minister, right in front of you. Lord, to the left, Lord Harold Wilson. Lord Harold Wilson. And then to the left, you've got um, the George Hotel, the birthplace of rugby league. And then you go down a massive yeah. hill, then you go up a massive hill, and then you go down a massive hill, and then to the left is the stadium. And if you're lucky, when you get there really early, you can't buy a beer. There's a gym next door. If you pay a pound to go in the gym, they'll let you buy a beer. There you go. That, that's my guided tour of Huddersfield. I feel yeah, like it might be alcohol-led alcohol <laughs> for some reason. Th this is why I've never been drinking with you. <laughs> yes. But, yes. 
Actually, I might have been. I just can't remember <laughs> any time yeah, that I, I have been drinking with you. I think that was the time when the Super League trophy was left in our um, company for some reason. But <laughs> less said about that, the better. Uh, <laughs> We, apparently, it's back in Wigan. Who knows? Um, Matt, thank you uh, for taking the time to join me. We're back now. We're going to keep it consistent. So thank you, everybody, for, for bearing with us. Uh, and, and thank you for, for your support. Um, just a shout out. I mentioned this before as well. Uh, Matthew, the Wigan runner, is his 900th run tonight. 900! 900! 900. 900. Um, so he's, he's closing on that 1,000th run, uh, which is just... the. The guy's incredible, isn't he? He's an absolute hero. Um, but well done, Matthew, uh, for that. So keep an eye on the Wigan Runner page uh, so you can find out where he is doing his nine or has done his 900th run this evening. So, Matt, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back next week for the, for the Sulphur game. And everybody for joining us, thank you. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>